All right, hi. Uh, welcome to part two. We're gonna get started on the drilling. I've already drilled out the tin holes on the air side of the block and turned it around. I've got the engines up against this uh, my one of my workbenches that gives it stability, so I can drill in this without uh, putting pressure on it, and not moving around. So I get myself all set up. I got a little bit of motor oil I'm gonna use as a cutting oil, and I've got a heavy duty half inch bit a drill with a handle, which is absolutely recommended. It's a must um, to keep from uh, injuring yourself and to give you the power you need to get this done fast and quick and clean. So I've got a half inch bit in the drill ready to go now. Got a 17 30 seconds bit, which is to follow. And then at that point, I have a tapered tap and a plug tap. The tapered tap is, is for guiding, which we'll get into here shortly, and the plug tap gets us to a proper depth for installation. Um, these are the only uh, tools that need to be bought and used and then of course your half inch drill bit and then here we have a ratcheting tap so that's going to help us with speed and getting this accomplished quick and then here's a special tool I make out of a, a short extension so I'm going to show this to you and what it comes in handy for here shortly anyway this does not require a jig plate this can be professionally done uh, by anyone who's brave enough to attempt working on a North Star and we've had 100% success with all our DIY guys buying studs and the mechanics around the world who use our studs on a regular basis. So I'm going to very quickly show you the process of the half inch drilling. We'll get you started here and then I'll give you a close up. So uh, these are all half inch holes and what happens is the half inch uh, bit will go down to the top of the threads before it begins to cut. The hole itself will keep me supported in vertical direction. Um, there will be no variance in the hole. It's going to get a clean cut straight to the bottom. We're going to do this very quickly. So. You notice at the bottom, when you hear the solid connection, and then I just kind of like to let it spin for a second. And that pulls all the tips out. Uh, when I'm doing this job, I'm doing it very quick. I right, make no mistake. Get in it, get it done, and get out of it. So I very quickly go through and and, and to avoid having to blow the chips out, you can just for a moment just take that little spin, make sure you got full body contact at the bottom. And when you pull it out, you'll you can look in there, you can see there's no chips left in the in there. And reason being, half inch, half inch, it's touching the walls, and then this cyclones the chips out. So let's we'll get it started again here. You can draw it any way you want. Grab at it, pull at it, let it suck itself in, it don't matter. This is a hardened bit and this is soft aluminum and it's going to let it go. So just get it in there, get it drilled and get it done. All right, so uh, the next step is I'm going to give you a real good close-up on these. There we go. Now sometimes we'll get a hold of blocks that have a really poor aluminum mix and we can tell that's because when we're drilling it out, man, this, these curled chips will come out like powder and real small. We know at that point that it's real dangerous to continue to work with the block as far as uh, it having failure in the future. And uh, so there, there has been a few that we just simply discarded and tried to move to a block that, that works good. But yeah, probably 99.99% .99 of the time, we do get blocks that have a good consistency to them. Some of them, some of them are a little bit better than others. You can see that that kind of curled chip. It just reaches in there and just curls that right on out of there. So you get close up of this. Basically, get the you can see. Watch this. So you can see that there's a little bit of depth right there. It's the very beginning of the bit. 
just kind of falls in place. That's because it's a half inch bit. And so when we spin it a little bit, it just, if you can see how fast it goes down, it jerks a little bit because it's tight, but it goes down fast. Now at this point, it's actually touching the top of the threads. So I got a good handle on it. I don't let go of it, man. Just hold on tight, you know, and give it some strength. And let it go. You see those chips coming out of there? That's some good consistency. They're already there. You hear that solid contact. Let those chips come out. That way I can move on to the next one without any problem. So let's uh, quickly just go through this. There. So there you have it. That was that's how fast those can be done. Now this is the this is the first one. Now if you want, you can go ahead and pull it out a little bit. It's not necessary when you let the drill bit take it out. As you can see, there's nothing nothing's flying out. But if you don't happen to get them out of there, it's a good idea to go ahead and do it. So we're gonna enlarge the camera again for you. Or the view, so we can move on to to the uh, second drill bit. Now, drill bits have a tendency to slip in the in your drill, so I take it one step farther, and I think I've shown this to you guys in the past. I don't use the chuck key because it can't tighten it without stripping or breaking the key. To the strength that I actually want it to be. So I use a pair of large uh, channel locking pliers. I'll take this one out. You can see it's very tight. There's the half inch. That's blocks been half inch drilled now. Just a couple minutes went by and it's done. We're going to move to a uh, another bit. This is the 1730 seconds. It's the next step. I'm going to take these pliers and I'm going to over tighten my, my drill on it so it doesn't lock up in the block while I'm using it. Okay. So now we're ready to go with the 17 30 seconds bit. Now again, no jig required. Perfectly vertical aligned holes, nothing to it. I didn't have to lock any kind of jig plate down and take it off and turn it over and lock it down and turn it over and turn it around, which could take in a day's worth of work. So um, it's not necessary in a headstone application if you learn to do it correctly. So we're gonna start with the, uh, this is the 17, 30 seconds. Now at this point, this is just a hair larger than that half inch hole. Just a hair, like paper thin. So what it's gonna do is it's going to take off such a soft material and such a thin layer that it's gonna wanna drill itself straight to the bottom very quickly. So I'm gonna try to keep it going slow so you can see it. It's already, it already grabbed, it's already beginning to pull. I want to make sure. I'm going a lot slower this time than I did in the last video just to try to. Somebody told me one time 
good God, Tim, you go at it like an animal. It's just because it's that easy. So I just, you know, I try to slow things down for you. It'll go quick. Let it do its own thing. Let it bottom out. All right, so there you have it. It's done. Very quickly. That's the 17, 30 seconds bit right there. So um, at this point, we're gonna change over to the taps and get that going for you. So at this point is where I will first uh, start doing a slight clean. Give it a nice, fresh, clean surface for the tap. That one. All right, now for this one, for tapping, I'm going to pull it away from the, the bench so I can walk around it freely. There's no longer going to be any pressure on the block, so I ain't going to worry about that. Let's get you rearranged here. Give you a wide view first here. Set the drill aside, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly get the bit changed out. What I have here is a short 3 8 drive extension and if you take a close look I've made cuts on this. The reason I made cuts on this is so I can easily, this is a, a very inexpensive way to do this, it has the right size uh, hole for your bits so it works perfectly. So the reason I made these cuts is so that when I clamp using this onto my drill it will bite this thing and not allow it to spin on you and then you can do this with ease. So. I'm going to plant this in my drill bit here. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to put this in my drill bit and get ready for tap. And then we'll get back to part three. And uh, we'll show you how simple it is to tap out the block to get it ready for head spreads. So bear with me. I'm going to take a quick coffee break and then I'll be right back.